Epoch. Mark this on your paper. This is definitely a vocabulary word. Okay. Epoch. E P O C. E dot P dot O dot C dot. Excess. Post exercise. Oxygen. Consumption. Excess. Post exercise. Oxygen. Consumption. Oxygen. Okay. This action. This excess. Excess. Okay. You're gonna have pretty much. If you look at time. And there are a lot of other things that are gonna go along with that as well. All right. Right here. We're at rest. So right here, this is you. Sitting down. Chilling. All right. Now. Somebody bust in here, I have a gun. It's gonna happen. We're gonna run. Post All right. Man. Okay, so what happens is your immediate demand for oxygen increases. Make sense? Mm -hmm. You got rest. Immediately, your demand for oxygen increases because your fight or flight system. It says, <gasps> What am I gonna do? Am I gonna run or am I gonna fight? Okay? And your demand stays steady for as long as you run. Okay? Now, just because you have a demand for something doesn't mean you're going to get it. Mm. Alright? So what happens is... Well, well what's, going, what's going to happen? It's going to be in the yeah. truck. Right. Well, we are the first action. thing you somebody let's 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 be positive and not say the gun. Okay, mm -hmm. we're on the we're on the on the line. We're at practice. We're getting ready to go off. Okay, we have two hundred. Mm -hmm. All right, we have two hundred. So what's going to happen? As soon as I start running, what's going to happen? Physiologically, what happens to my body? Yeah, heart starts beating faster. Increase your heart rate. What else? Increase pulse. Okay. Um, okay. Blood circulation. Same thing. Oh, start using your body, activity. your yeah. muscles. Um, muscle activate. Okay. Increase requirement for ATP. Good. What else? Sweat. What causes you to sweat? Heat. Increase core temperature. Mm -hmm. Alright. Now. We have this immediate demand. We're on the line. Gun popped off. Boom. Now what happens is all right. This is the oxygen that we are actually using. So if you notice you've got some space. Remember, this is the requirement. This is what you're using. Notice that there is a deficit. Okay? There is an immediate deficit. Mm -hmm. Alright? Now what happens is as you're running, as you're sprinting, your body is going to eventually catch up. So, that's this. Your body is going to catch up until here we reach steady state. And steady state is where your requirement for oxygen is met by your body. Okay? It's met by your lungs. It's met by um, the capillaries using oxygen and moving it into the bloodstream. Or excuse me, moving it into the muscle so the muscle can utilize it. Alright? Now, when we went, when we talked about anaerobic glycolysis, okay? Yeah, can, you, can you say that again? You said yeah. the, the steady state is the requirement for oxygen. When, is when the requirement for oxygen is met by... The, the the body's ability to maintain or utilize oxygen. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. When the body reaches its peak, then, or, no. or what is it to maintain? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
Now, again, here is steady state. We reach steady state here, okay? Now, this here, this area where we're at an oxygen deficit, meaning that we don't have enough. So when we don't have enough oxygen, we're looking, we're working on that ATP-CP system. Mm -hmm. ATP-CP. So mm -hmm. gun hop, pops off, boom. My 10 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. ATP-CP, because it's readily, readily available. Mm -hmm. Okay? After the ATP-CP system, the rest of this mm -hmm. is through anaerobic glycolysis. Anaerobic. Two to four minutes, right? Uh-huh. That's that two to four minutes of anaerobic glycolysis. Some people, you're going to hit two. Some people, you're going to hit four. Yeah. Lance Armstrong will probably hit yeah. like 12. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Okay? Now, eventually, you're going to have to slow down. Right? Or your body gets into a rhythm. When your body gets into that rhythm of inspiring oxygen, that your body can use all of it, then you have reached that steady state. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here, we cross our 200. Exercise stops. So because exercise stops, the demand for oxygen immediately decreases. The demand for oxygen immediately decreases. All right? But what happens? Is that right on the side? So here it's exercise stop. All right. And this is okay. this is your requirement for oxygen. It goes back to the resting state. Your requirement for oxygen. Or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your demand for oxygen. What's your requirement for oxygen? You don't did all this. What happens after you finish running or you finish exercising? Or that slows down. Yeah, but you still feel like you need to get oxygen. Breathe. Exactly. Excess post exercise oxygen consumption. This is the oxygen that is consumed because of your initial mm -hmm. deficit. Oh, so it's the balance of it all. Absolutely. All right? Huh. Okay. So, in here, you are going to decrease heart rate. That's why cool down is necessary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Decrease temp. Right? You're going to decrease almost in the bloodstream. All of that stuff. Okay? Now, when you warm up, your warm up causes, now this all becomes um, your oxygen. Your warm up causes less of a deficit because you have intentionally increased your heart rate. You have intentionally increased the oxygen that you're consuming. You have intentionally increased your core temperature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end of your warm, warm up, you should be sweating. Right. Right. And right? Then, yeah. Yeah. So that's so, so, what is it? Mm. Mm -hmm. so, so the warm up essentially makes it so that you're so that it's not extremely difficult for you to cool down. Like, like, say, for example, you don't warm up at all before you decide to run this 200, right? Okay. And you run the 200, and then now you're, I mean, you're just, you're just more, more winded and stuff at the end. Like, it's, like, it's more difficult. Yes. In theory, yes. In theory. Okay. Now, the warm-up, the purpose of warm-up is hard, not right? only to make it easier to get to steady state. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the warm-up is to prepare the body for exercise. Mm-hmm. This is the exercise. You're preparing your body for it. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, all right, when I increase my core temperature by increasing the heart rate, now the heart rate is going to bring natural warmth to the body, and now my heat is going to be expended, and now I'm going to be into sweat. Mm -hmm. All right? All that does is it helps your, your muscles warm up. Mm -hmm. Literally, mm -hmm. physically, increase the core temperature. It helps your muscles warm up. Increases, I know, I'm trying, I don't know where these little gnats come from. Um, but increasing your core temperature or your temperature of your muscles, it decreases the potential for injury. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you stretch, mm -hmm. now my, my hamstring is a little bit more capable of, of handling uh, anything else. Mm. Okay? Right. Now, back to the actual epoch. Okay? Now, all of this time, here you are decreasing heart rate, decreasing temperature. 
um, your hormones are going back to normal levels, all right? So when you stop running, your body still has to catch up to the deficit. It has to pay back. It has to literally pay back, okay? Now, have you ever, you got to exercise it, boom, all right? But immediately you hop into the shower, mm. and you got the shower, and you're still sweating. Mm -hmm. That's because your body has not fully reached homeostasis. Right. You're still in excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. So, so EPOC is pretty much just, um, not that, um, just like this bottom portion. And EPOC? is that a process or is EPOC just like the definition of when you just have too much oxygen that you don't need? No, not too much. It's saying that, hey, bounce. I have to catch up from the deficit of before. Okay. So when I get on the treadmill, I'm using my ATP CP. All right? ATP CP right now. Then I'm using my aerobic or anaerobic glycolysis, okay? Anaerobic glycolysis. No, I, I've before my anaerobic glycolysis right now, and I had to actually slow down, okay? What happened is my body was able to remember your example of transferring oxygen, okay? My body was able to maintain a steady flow, okay? Now, what happens in exercise when you actually, um, let's say that we are doing a 55. Right, we're sprinting. You want a 50 yard dash. All right. Now, with the 50 yard dash, of course, your demand for oxygen, I must say, it stays the same. All right. But what happens is that you don't reach a steady state mm -hmm. because you can't maintain it mm -hmm. because you're only using this ATP CP system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you cannot maintain a steady state, all right. When you can't maintain a steady state, that becomes your um, your threshold. Mm -hmm. All right, that becomes your anaerobic threshold. So here is AT. AT is anaerobic threshold. Now you want to train at AT. All right, if you train above AT, that's great, no problem with it. So when you train above AT, that's where you are training your body to store more creatine to store more than a triphosphate, right? And again, there are only limited levels that you can store, but it's also working on your body on being more efficient and utilizing those things. Okay, is this why people, you know how people for a while, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they were uh, doing creatine, creatine supplements and stuff to boost their, their anaerobic activity? Because it threshold. boosts the creatine phosphate in the body. Right. When y'all were holding hands, we cut it, boom, energy. And then it just gives them more power. If mm -hmm. I have more stored energy or more energy that's readily, readily available, mm -hmm. I can do one more. Creatine, all it does is help you do one more because right. you have more energy that's readily available. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, AT, uh, anaerobic uh, threshold, okay? Now, let's say that, another example, this is, this is running steady state, all right? This exercise is a steady state. All right, doing a million jumping jacks, whatever. Now, let's say that we have an interval, a fart leg. My demand for oxygen is going to rise and fall frequently. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, in order for this to occur, does this require energy here? This yes. oxygen deficit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In order for your body to see it back to steady state, does that require energy? Yeah. All right. So let's say that this requires 10 calories. It's very easy math. This requires 10 calories. How many calories did you burn? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, this requires mm -hmm. 20. 20. Right. So this requires, yes. Okay. Let's say that's uh, 80. Okay, so how many calories did you burn if that requires 20? So that requires 20. 10, 80, 10. 20. 10? Oh, 10, 80. Okay. 80, 10. All right, okay. so we got 100 calories that we just burned. Great. It's awesome. We just ran 10 minutes, burned 100 calories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How would, how would, your cool down. or this side be 10 as well as that side is 10 if you know you don't really do much it's a deficit it's if you owe me i'm not asking you interest right now not right now mm -hmm. i just want what i'm i'm old so you gotta get that because you're still burning calories when you calm and calm and down and everything right yes he was saying something different okay. but you're correct okay. <laughs> all right so again it requires calories to get there it requires massive calories to stay there but it still requires calories to get your body back. 
all right? Because your heart rate is still pumping high mm -hmm. until it gets back low, all right? So now, we burned 100 calories jogging. Let's say this was our 10-minute jog, okay? 100 calories. Now, let's say I'm doing a fart leg. I'm doing a mild fart leg, okay? My need for energy immediately rises. Then it falls. So, here, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. All right? My need for energy rises, all right? Then it falls. Deficit, epoch. Then I do it again. Need for energy, boom. Then I do it again. Mm -hmm. And then I do it again. Mm -hmm. And then I do it again. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, this is still going to be 10. But that is going to lessen. This can be, this is going to lessen because you're not fully going to get back to rest, right. resting. So let's say this is five. Mm -hmm. But because I'm doing more, now I'm going to do at a higher intensity, mm -hmm. even though we're at the same intensity. All right? Now, let's, let's say I did it at the same intensity. I still have to add the deficit and the epoch. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if I'm adding 10 for the deficit, 5 for the epoch, let's just say, but I do 50 calories, 50 calories, 50 calories, 50 calories. Mm -hmm. Do you see how you burn more calories doing interval training than you do in steady state exercise? So a person doing, so, so okay, so now I get it even more than I, I wrote it out. It's if, so the sprinter is going to be burning, well, no, because if I'm doing, if I'm Any doing drills, as, if I'm walking, I'm going to burn less calories though than the person that's jogging on the, in that in, interval. Yes, so. because if I'm walking, my requirement for oxygen is it's lower. Less. Right. Therefore, I'm burning less calories. Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So do you guys see how the your interval training is absolutely the best style of training? Okay. Hit is just a new name. Okay. It's just it's all it is is just high intensity interval training. Mm -hmm. Woo! It's mm -hmm. like CrossFit. CrossFit is just a name. Right. All it is is the Olympic lifting. Uh huh. Okay. And they have a specific style. They do it in. One that I don't particularly now, agree with. Does the interval training does it have to be necessarily low weight? Interval. Remember, just she just had interval like training back back, from right? one mile to two miles. Mm -hmm. You could have said, uh, your intervals are going to be, all right, you've got four 200s. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. You've so. got three 100s. Well, that's just like doing... You've got 10 50s at the same, you know. Yeah. That's interval. I'm like doing four sets of like 10 that repetitions of interval. anything. Interval, interval is okay. short burst of activity. You can do push-up intervals. 10. Mm. 10 second rest. 10. Mm. 10 so second that's rest. like circuit training. As well, is that, that's circuit training is actually with stations. Right, you're doing but, a different thing in different stations. Mm -hmm. Interval training is just activity, mm -hmm. no activity. Okay. Activity, no activity. Circuit training is push-ups, jumping jacks, sit-ups, whatever else. Mm -hmm. Circuit is just something. It's an actual exercise. All right. Interval is the circuit training is under the umbrella of intervals. Okay, that's so fast. And did it? Call really? Me. Yep. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so when you train, you always want to take rests. Because, yes, you are allowing the person to catch their breath, but in the end, they will burn more calories than if they are just running or just walking or just 5K. Mm. So I don't really like runners. Sorry, I know you're a BGR. <laughs> right? But a lot of times they think that, man, I just ran for two right. hours. Right. That's awesome. Let me show you how to burn four times the calories in a fraction of the time. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to run a mile straight and then versus someone run a mile but rest each, you know, rest for like five seconds each. Or I mean like, like 10, 15 seconds each, uh, you know, each lap. Would they burn more calories? If they answer the question. They would have to. Huh? You answer the question. From what you're saying, I'm, I guess it is, right? There you go. Oh, wow. If because you have to high. rest when you finish. And then you start up again. When you start up again on that you're second interval, mm -hmm. you're still in a deficit. Right. Anybody mm -hmm. has to work and move to get back to a state. And that's state. actually harder. Because that's to why come it, down, that's, to jump up. To, go back up. to come down, to jump up. Mm -hmm. Outside of just maintaining the activity itself. That's like, yeah, it's harder. Oh, I was just saying, like, um, as long as, like, the, the intensity is still high, like, let's say a person ran them out, and then let's say the next person ran them out but they ran they jogged a lot you know and then took like a break and, and your epoch can be your rest can be active 
Mm-hmm. Or passive. Like, we mean like passive. drills. Give me an example. Okay, so in my mind, for the sprinter, the rest was the drills. Yeah, what, are, what do you mean by drills? Like, um, say you want to do, like, um, I don't know, like, like kick outs or whatever. Okay. So what was the so exercise? The exercise. The, what do you mean? You the, said the rest was the drills. So right, the just, exercise was the sprints. All right. And then the rest was the drills. So you did sprints and then drills and yeah, then sprints? Spr- yeah. That's so active, that's active rest. rest. Okay. And the passive rest would be just standing there. Mm-hmm. Or, or pass out on the floor. Or pass out on the floor. Right. Right? Right. So when you do an active rest, you are still up burning more calories. You're still allowing your body to get down, you know, to, to decrease heart rate, to do whatever. But you're still burning more calories. So an active rest... To a an exercise can be a walk, a mm-hmm. jog, mm-hmm. right? An active rest to a bench rest. I'm trying to max out my active rest. I'm still moving, mm-hmm. right? Then mm-hmm. I'm back on, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if I'm hitting pads, right, my active rest can be moving. I can both do jumping jacks. I can do I can jump do rope. jump ropes. My active rest can be a different exercise, mm-hmm. right? right? I can do squats. My active 